Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how we can do the installation for Neo4j desktop so that we can work on graph frag use cases. So we have already worked on traditional rag approach, the retrieval augmented generation approach, which basically converts your data into vector embeddings and then it's used for retrieval for uh, question answering with the LLM. But graph uh, rag has advantages than compared to this usual rag that we do because this graph databases allows you to store data with nodes and properties for this nodes and also it helps us to establish the relationships between several nodes and this makes the retrieval process more efficient and accurate and the LLMs can make better sense out of this. So this is the few advantages of uh, graph rag and in this video let's understand how we can get started with Neo4j which is a graph database. There is also another graph database called as MemGraph which is an open source uh, kind of a graph database but let's discuss this Neo4j's uh, version. Okay, so just go to Google and search for Neo4j download and if you are on Windows you can just like uh, kind of open this site of Neo4j desktop download. So from there you can download yours. So once you click your uh, download, you will be asked to enter your name, email ID, organization name and so on. So you can give anything for your company name and job title. You can give your actual company name or you can just put your name. So that should be fine. And once you click on this download desktop button, so that's going to give you a license key. So after you have filled this, so it will give you a license key. You can copy that license key and paste it in a notepad file and your download will start. So that is the first step. So let's say that you have done those two steps of filling in this form and uh, copying and copying your uh, license key and putting it here. So the next step would be to open your Neo4j desktop setup file. So I'll uh, open this. So now we can install this application. So you can choose either to only for me so that it doesn't require uh, admin access and so on or you can choose this anyone who access this computer if you want this to be accessed on uh, uh, other users who are using this computer as well I'll, I'll just select only for me for now and I'll click on next this will be the installation location and the installation doesn't take that much time so it's like pretty shorter installation so let's wait for this to complete and we have this run Neo4j, maybe I'll just like uncheck this box, finish this and later run this. So this is the first step, which is like a pretty simple installation process. So we just have to download this and uh, copy and paste our uh, license key. So I have my license key here, which we'll later use. And next step is we can directly open this and paste our uh, license key when it kind of asks for it. Or you can also register with your email as well. So I'll open this application. So this has opened this page because I have tried installing this previously so that setting has probably kind of saved but when you run this for the first time it will ask you to paste your uh, license key or you can kind of type in your name, email id and the organization. You can give the same details that you have given in this page or just paste the license key. So after that you will see this loading screen that the one that you have seen before. Maybe I'll just open this again. So once you have given your license key this is how it's going to look like with several uh, kind of process that happens to start this Neo4j desktop. So yeah, this is the thing that I was talking about. So this may take some time when you're running it for the first time. It may take like a few minutes. And after that, you will see this particular, uh, you know, uh, example database, which is movie DBMS. So the database management system for the sample movie database. So here you can start this. And before starting that, you can go to this graph app. So we have DBMS. And then we have this graph apps and within this graph apps, you will see this Neo4j browser, Neo4j Bloom and so on. So this Neo4j browser is something that we can use. It's, it's kind of lets you to visualize the data that's present as nodes and relationships in your uh, database. And the first time you are opening it, you may not see something here or this basically will be an empty page for some people. It's just like take some time for it to render. So you may not see it for some time. Just open this and wait for some time or even you can refresh this and close and, and open the Neo4j desktop application again. So that's all you have to do. You will see this Neo4j browser option here. Once you have the Neo4j browser option, so you can start this. So this will start your uh, database for this movie database, which already has some sample examples. And once it has started, we can click on this open and start it with our Neo4j browser as well. So let's wait for this database to start. So you can see that it's it, the status is starting.
right so now the database is active and this is like the default user and the database details that we have so here i can click on this open and it opens with neo4j browser as i said you, this neo4j browser should be enabled here so i'll click here uh, click this uh, database dbms thing and i can hover over this movie dbms click on this open button that's going to open it with neo4j browser so this is my neo4j browser window so where i can select the database within this so i have this neo4j and system right so this basically comes from this two uh, db that we have system and neo4j are the two database so this is a database server kind of thing and then we have like two databases within that neo4j and other thing you even if you want you can create a new database here as well and uh, we can select whether we want system which is basically empty or you can select neo4j and here we have about 169 entities so i'll click on that so here we are seeing some data right so this is that sample data so this is uh, basically a movie database so we have this violet color node right so this circle is what we call as a node and each node has a property like this so it has an element id id and released is one of the nodes so it basically the year on, uh, in, in which a film has been released so that's there and then tagline is another property so the tagline of the movie and then we have the title a few good men and if you click on this orange uh, thing it's basically a node so this orange so these circles are basically nodes and we have this orange node and this particular node if you take it it has properties of bond and name so it gives you uh, the person's uh, birth year and the name of that person which is tom cruise in this case so similarly we have all the actors probably involved in that movie and then we also have this relationship so this arrow is what we call as a relationship and you have this relationship properties as uh you know acted in okay and, and then we also have what the role that they have played in that movie so we have this uh movie and the in the movie we have this relationship of acted in by this particular person and they are kind of like acted in this particular role if you click on tom cruise and the relationship for tom cruise you will see that uh, we have like this role name that he has played in the movie so similarly we have the other movie and if you see this one the movie in this case is the matrix revolution and in matrix revolution probably like let's say keanu reeves is involved in this matrix uh, revolution thing matrix reloaded is what keanu reeves is and he has also probably acted in the devil's advocate so the reason i wanted to mention this is a person can you know they could have added in several movies and they are kind of a common uh, connecting part between these two movies right so this is a very important aspect right because in the normal uh, rag that we do with conversion of data into vector embeddings we may not be able to catch these kind of relationship so we would be able to catch the semantic similarity using the vector search but we may not be able to clearly identify the relationships but that's the biggest advantage of graph database where we can have several properties for a node and also uh, create a relationship between one node and the other node so in this case the movie node is uh, the devil's advocate right and and then we have several other nodes connected with relationships and so on and then we have like two major uh, family of nodes which contains this particular the matrix movie and then we have this keanu reeves who have acted in like other movie as well so this is the sample uh, database that we have and we can similar to sql queries we have uh, some query called a cipher query which is used to create this uh, nodes relationships and so on so in this place in this top bar that you are seeing here you can run some commands or it, it's again not commands but queries so cipher queries which is similar to sql queries in a uh, mysql and other database we have some cipher queries that's going to retrieve some data to you based on this uh, graph database or you can also create new nodes and relationships as well so this is what happens when you kind of connect this uh, graph database via a lang chain and you can like kind of build a question answering system not on top of a vector database but on top of a graph database so now what i'll do is i'll uh, copy this movie name a few good men and i'm going to ask chatgpt to ju just generate me some cipher query that's going to list all the actors who have acted in the movie uh, a few good men so maybe let's do that so i'll open my chatgpt and i'll just say that i have a uh, graph database in neo4j movie dbms find the person so pay, pay close attention to the node so the label for this particular node is person and the node for movie is movie right so pay close attention to this and you have to use the same names there so find uh, the person involved Uh, 
uh, in the movie I can maybe put the node within this so node is movie so that it's clear for the GPT model but in Langston we don't have to do this because like all this prompting are already there so for just generating the query I'll just be more specific since so the node will be person right so I have a graph database in Neo4j movie DBMS find the list of persons node person involved in the movie so generate the cipher query for this let's send this and let's get the response from ChatGPT. so let's see if it's able to give a proper query or we are getting some errors so this is how a cipher query will look like so match p person acted in director produce this particular movie written and so on so we don't have a uh, director produced or so on but we have this acted in as the relationship acted underscore in so i think it was able to get that properly so i'll copy this not sure if it's going to return correctly but let's see so i can select all this and run this so we have uh, this particular person's name and so on actor in movie so we have to give the movie name right so this uh, okay let, let's see what this is giving so this is not giving the people who have acted in the movie a few good men because i think i didn't mention that in the prompt so instead it's just giving all the people who have been acted in the movie and the corresponding movie name as this is a good example as well so we have emily ephraim so probably i'm not pronouncing this correctly but yeah ephraim or someone so and then we have joel silver and and other people as well so basically we have the person name and the movie that they have acted in for all the movies for which we have the graph database a few good men and so on maybe let's ask chat gpt for the movie name a few good men so let's say this is what I'm interested in. Not the not all the movies, but just these two. Sorry, just this particular movie. Let's see if this works. And alternatively, you can also see the list of movies that are acted by Keanu Reeves. So that should give the multiple movies that we have relationship for Keanu Reeves. So click here and paste your query. Select this and run it. So we have like all the people's names. So these are the list of people who have acted in this particular uh, A Few Good Men movie, which is something that you can see here. So these are some of the cipher queries you can kind of use in order to uh, retrieve some data. So what we are basically going to do is in, in, in graph rack, the user will kind of ask a question in natural language and we would probably convert some data. It can be a document data or other structured data. So that we would probably post it in a graph database like this and build a graph structure with proper nodes and relationships. So once we have that, we ask the question in natural language and the LLM would convert this natural language question to a cipher query based on the node names, labels and so on. And it will generate a cipher query that's going to uh, retrieve the related information. And finally, we can get a response from the LLM. So this is how the concept of graph rack works, but I'll make a detailed video on that and, and how to build this graph rack system with Langchain. But the first step in this video for us to understand is just to set up Neo4j and just like play around with this database. So there are also commands using which there is this match and delete command that will just clear up or basically delete all the nodes and relationship that you have in this database. So you can try that as well. And you can also create your own graph database. Again, just go to chat GPT and just ask it to build like, let's say a complex graph database with proper nodes and relationship on some use case. Let's say uh, hospital network data, details about some patients, hospital and so on. So it can give you mock-up uh, cipher queries to generate some data. So you can play around with that. So maybe that's something that you can write, but this is all about this graph database where we will create uh, graph structure with nodes and relationships that's really good for retrieval and later this retrieved information is kind of sent to the LLM and it can answer our questions where we just ask it in natural language okay so that is all I wanted to cover in this video so I hope that this is useful to you I'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching